monthly meetings and the fundraiser at the same time. So sometimes I'll call Angie and say, Safari Club International Sportsman Against Cancer Program. And what we do in that program is we provide uh, game meat to cancer patients who uh, otherwise can't eat domesticated type meat because of all the hormones and, and, and chemicals that that's injected with. So this is uh, basically hormone-free, drug-free meat that they get and it uh, won't interfere with their recovery but gives them the protein they need. Uh, and this also is giving the Lee County Sheriff's Office a chance to show off its new range and it involves uh, law enforcement agencies from all across the state and it's a chance for them to get together too, learn about Safari Club, learn about the Sheriff's Office's new range and, and get to know each other as well. I know it's hard to guess, but uh, as far as raising money, um, do you expect a big chunk? We are expecting uh, for today, and this is the first time we've done this, between three and five thousand dollars for the Sportsman Against Cancer program, which is, is a significant amount. Uh, what does this mean to you personally, Bruce? It's got to be a good feeling. It's, it's a great feeling. Uh, Sportsman Against Cancer was a program we started in our own local chapter here in Naples and Fort Myers, and it's gone national. And it's to hear some of the patients talk about what a difference this meat has made to them, because uh, oftentimes with cancer, the cure is just as bad as the disease. And they're in a very weakened state, and then when they can finally get some hormone-free meat into them and that get that protein, they build up their strength, and it gives them what they need to fight the disease and helps them in recovery. Just got over there. That's something over there, isn't it? Yes, unbelievable. Sir. It really is unbelievable. Yes, sir. May I ask you a big favor, being an old retired yeah. Navy guy myself? Uh, what? <laughs> what can I tell you? We, Navy? <laughs> what can I tell you? Yeah, we Navy? Like <laughs> would, you guys, yes, would you mind having a picture of Mike and I? Or what? Well, as long as I don't have to have a picture of an Navy guy. Okay. One bridge in the middle of the bridge, I just fall in half feet. Are you shooting? Are you shooting tonight? You're looking, you're looking splendid. Angie, come on in this picture. You're looking good. What are you doing? We're going to get a picture of you and Mike and the general and I. on the front yard. Yeah, I bet. Okay, what are we doing now? We're going to just stand right here. Just stand right here. I just need to introduce you to the rest of the gang, so we'll make this real quick. Real quick, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very, very nice. General, thank you. You're very welcome, General. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to turn you over to Captain Sims. Captain Sims is responsible for uh, arranging General. the events today. Okay. And without him, this event wouldn't have been possible. Thank God to the, the Lee County Sheriff's Department and to, to Sheriff Scott who have allowed us to use the facilities. They worked very hard to make this event sure. possible. Thank you. If you'll follow me, I'll show okay. you a couple areas. Are you going to stick around? I'm going to be around. I'll okay. stick around. I, hey, Take care, sir. If you can believe it, I'm sponsoring the IRS. I don't know who should shoot who. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, we can either head that way first, or we could head out to the range where the shooters Which way do you want me to go? They're being recharged. We'll go out here first. General, if I may, I'll give you these.
I'm looking forward to seeing the competition and may the best man win. I guess that's all I can say, right? Thanks a lot for turning out here. You're supporting a great cause. And I'm happy to be here with you. That's about it, right? What are you recording here? Carry on, Scott. Carry on. There's really no way to... I'm a positive thinker, you know, and I, it's one of those deals where you say, hey, I found out I had a problem and I took care of it. Do you advocate organic farming? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a health nut of, of one sort or another. I, I eat healthy all the time and, and that sort of thing. I think that anything we can do to clean up the environment, to clean up our, you know, the food supply and make sure that we're eating the right thing, it, it is all, a, all that's good stuff. Okay. You know, it, it's a question of expense and, and, you know, not everybody can afford that sort of thing either. So, right. so in that case, you know, then, then we have an obligation to do something about that. So then hunting provides a cheaper means of getting that sort of resource. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you a hunter? Yeah, yeah, indeed. I've had three or four trips to Africa, and, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, I love it, but I'm also a conservationist. You know, I, I believe I'm the national spokesperson for the recovery of the grizzly bear, for instance, and that sort of thing. So, I, you know, I don't believe in overhunting. I think, you know, you... And I believe in ethical hunting, absolutely, you know, fair chase, and, you know, very, very important. Desert Storm is a pretty swift campaign. Uh, what, what's your uh, your views on today's uh, Go For campaign? Well, you know, I don't comment on today's. I, I had enough people second-guessing me when I was over there. I, one thing I promised, I'd never second-guess anybody else who was in that same position. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, if, if you would, uh, who's your, uh, who's your, uh, your pick in 2008? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> Are you going to run for office? Uh, no. I, I can assure you that the, the answer to the latter is no. No, I'll wait and see who the candidates are before I predict who I'm going to vote for. Very good. Um, you, you had described, uh, I've read your memoir, and you described that uh, you, you are a pacifist. Does is is that hold true today as well? Still? Yeah, you know, you know, I'm the last person in the world that wants to go to war. War is a terrible thing. You know, and that could be avoided at all. No, I'm not going to be shooting today. I use a shotgun. I couldn't even see that. That gives you a better, better, better case than the, the, the uh, pistol. Well, thanks for your time. Okay. Enjoy, enjoy your day here. And Cas Caslow, Caslow, and Walker. On the right, at the sound of the whistle.
in the front yard, that? okay? That's uh, they're eating grass, and that uh, takes yeah. care of all those problems. Um. Tampa, yes. Why make the trip today? Huh? Why'd you make the trip today? Why? Yeah. Well, because it's a great project. It's supporting a great cause. Okay, it's state of the art. It's interesting to see. You know, I've always had an interest in police work. My dad was superintendent of New Jersey State Police for 15 years, the organizer and the first superintendent. So, you know, I've got a police association and I've got a hunting association, and and uh, you know, this is a good cause, and I'm happy to be able to support it. Doesn't take much on my part, you know, a two and a half hour drive down here and I get to visit and meet a lot of nice people and see a lot of interesting things and two and a half hours back home again. Sleep in my bed tonight, my own bed tonight. So it's yeah. good. Well, very good. Well, you see this video here. Uh, how long have you been involved with Safari Club? Oh my goodness. About 15 years now, I guess, or so. It just, just seemed like a good cause for you? Yeah, it's a terrific cause. I, you know, they are very, 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 very uh, strong on ethical hunting, you know, and not, uh, and uh, they, they, they police the business very, very thoroughly. If they find an unethical guide or unethical things carrying on, they, you know, they go after them big time, as they should. And, and I think that they also have to, you know, put the right spin on hunting, that hunting isn't just a matter of going out and killing an animal or something like that, but, you know, but doing some good in the process of doing that. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a fine organization. I, I've been, let me put it this way, I've enjoyed my association with them. Very good. Uh, now, and you were talking a moment ago when, when we were talking to you in the fire range, I couldn't hear you very well, so I'm going to ask you again here. Uh, you said, you know, you, you didn't want to be critical of uh, uh, any administration right now, but uh, talk about the troop numbers uh, in Desert Storm versus now, and are you comfortable with that? Or? No, you know, I, it's, it's, you know, you hate to see any people die and give their lives. Particularly after I had, you know, I had 541,000 troops under my command, and uh, I think we lost something like 20 or something total. And you know, when you see a couple, of, you know, we're over 2,000 now. And, you know, you hate to see that. You know, I, I, uh, I love the troops. I always have loved the troops, and obviously, every single life is important to me. Every single one. And therefore, when you lose, I don't, I don't agree with the theory that okay, well, if you're war, therefore you're going to lose lives, and that's perfectly all right. That's absolutely wrong. I think any commander worth his salt does everything he possibly can to avoid casualties. But the commanders over there, I know them very well. They're fine, fine people, you know, wonderful people, and, and they would never waste their lives uh, uselessly. I'm sure of that. Is it, is it time to withdraw? Huh? Is it time to withdraw? I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, there's, that, that's a decision that's going to be made by a lot higher people than I am, and that's uh, right. who have a lot more knowledge of the situation than I do. Okay. Um, I think we're great. Well, your thoughts on the Lee uh, gun range today? What you saw? What's were you that? We impressed with the uh, gun range. Oh yeah, this is a state of the art. Not only is it state of the art from a shooting standpoint, but it's a state of the art from an environmental standpoint. And all of those things that places in the past have, have had trouble with lead poisoning and that sort of thing, uh, you know, you're not going to have it here. It's a really, really sensational 
Uh, I've, I've never, I, you know, I've seen a lot of ranges, and I've never seen one like this before. Really terrific. Good. Well, thanks for your time, General. Okay, you're very welcome. You. As far as a mile away. Theoretically, they can go a mile and three quarters away. Land, and if you've got very dry conditions around your home, even if you live in a gated community, you can have a little fire start. Mulch. Mulch is a wood product. Is a mulch a good thing? Sure it is. It keeps you know a little bit of moisture inside, but if you allow that mulch to dry out it becomes another fertile area for these fires to start. The bigger the mulch, the better. Chunky bark, if you're gonna use a wood product, is the best. The worst would be pine needles. Pine needles burn very, very quickly. So if you're not watering regularly your, your shrubs and your plants that have mulch around them, you've got a little fire area right there. If it's close to your siding, that mulch can start burning, burn your siding. Yes. There, 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 there is an explanation for that. And as the, the fire gets close, the radiant heat will melt the side. If they're fortunate enough that the um, insulation material is intact, that will stop some of that radiant heat. But if it's old and if it's ripped, like on my house, okay, then again, there's ways for that heat to get directly to the wood and then it becomes a house fire. So again, it's one of those things that if it's not old and if it's okay, then it's not going to keep moving through that final side. Oftentimes, you know, we're talking percentages here, percentages of survival. So sometimes luck will play into it. You know, is it your day? You know, and unfortunately, that, that, that's a, we can never make a home completely fireproof. They thought they had, you know, wind-resistant windows up to 200 miles an hour. Well, gee, they broke. How come? You know, it just was that day. 